Hey, this is Nori from My Service Depot. Today we're going to talk about the newest enhancements to version 97 of Smart Service. Let's go ahead and get started. Today we're going to run through a job from start to finish. We'll take a look at a couple different scenarios where these new features apply because they're all based around your job process and making things easier on both you in the office and the field. Let's go ahead and take a look at our first example. That'll be email as required field. So to set up email as a required field, the first stop we're going to make is going to be in the setup tab of smart service in the top right hand corner. From there we're going to head over to our requireds field section. And in the required fields, you want to mark the box next to email. This will make it required on prospects, prospect jobs, customers, and job records. That would also include locations. To use this feature, the next time we go to any job where we might not have an email on file for the customer, I'll go ahead and open up one of those. We'll notice that the email field is yellow. That means, as you know, that it is a required field. We do have to put that information in. If I skip this field and I don't put anything in there, let's say I try to save and close this job, I'll get a prompt requesting that email. So now I can go ahead and add the address in, and upon clicking save, I'll be able to successfully exit the record recording that customer's email. Now as a side note, we do advise that if you do take an email from a customer, go ahead and make sure to use the mass update utility to copy that email to all their other records. That way each record doesn't make it required, you'll have the email across the board on all of the customer's jobs. To learn more about the Mass Update Utility function, click on the link on your screen to view our previous video on that feature from 2016. The next feature on our list is an addition for our U.S. customers. We've added a couple extra things to the address certification feature in Smart Service. And you'll notice here, if I go to a job, it's hard to tell when I have certified an address and when I haven't yet. So, taking a look at my job, I'll go ahead and try it out. I'll click the check marks up by the address, certify my address as usual, and click save. Now something different is going to happen when I do this. Instead of marking that as just a regular address and adding the information in, you'll notice the check mark in the top right hand corner of the address has turned green. That check mark will let me know that this address has already been certified before. That way, every time I come into this record, if the address looks a little strange, I won't have to recertify it if I'm not sure. I can always look at those check marks, see if it's been done before I got here. So the next feature on our list is going to be seasonal recurrence patterns. Now this is one of the biggest features we've added in Smart Service version 97, so I'm going to break this down into two parts. For the first part, we're going to pretend like we're a fire protection company. We're going to go out there and we're going to service, let's say, a hangar at an airport or some other large job that might take a few days, maybe a school. So what I can do is go into my scheduling tab of my job and I can schedule the first visit that we have. Now perhaps I'm going to go out there a couple days, you know, several days, maybe a month at a time to get this job done. Well, what I can do is schedule my recurrence pattern as I would usually like to, so we'll say a daily pattern every weekday. But I don't want this to continue on for the next year and have to remember to come back and switch this to non-recurring later. So what I can do is use our new feature by selecting our date adding our pattern, and then using this ends after box. So basically what this does is it puts a stopping point on that recurrence pattern. It won't run for the rest of the year. It will run until this date. So by doing so, I've said, okay, start today, December 23rd, work your way every weekday until I hit January 19th. So if I come down here in my list, we'll see the pattern actually stops at January 19th. All right, so the next portion of this would be for customers that do seasonal jobs. Let's go ahead and take a look at a lawn maintenance company. So we're going to go out there and we're going to do a, let's say, weekly contract with our customers. And this time, I'm going to go to my scheduling tab. And I'm going to say, well, of course I want to mow your lawn in the spring and in the summer and part of the fall, but I'm not going to come out there and mow it in the winter, obviously. So instead of setting a weekly pattern that runs all year round until the next date, what you can do is select your first date, add the pattern, and then in the excluded periods, you can mark off the dates you do not want to service. What this will do is let me pick, let's say I'm going to do my last mowing at uh, September 29th, and I'm going to start up my first mow at April 7th. By selecting those dates, it will omit any of the dates in between those two. So now if you look at my pattern, 
it will start on the correct date. If I scroll down to the bottom, it will also end on the correct date. Now you can put multiple patterns on this job. So the one I've added here is for 2017 to 2018. If I'd like to do another pattern, let's say part of 2018 to 2019, not a problem. The more dates you add, the more you can get. Another feature added in version 97 of Smart Service is a long-awaited feature, and that's going to be the ability to set color by categories for the scheduling board and for iFleet. Let's go ahead and take a look at how we use this new feature. So, previously you would use custom color coding if you'd like to indicate, you know, something to your technicians, maybe click payment after service, this is an emergency job, something like that. Well, those were just colors, though. You just select dark red, light red, whatever it may be, and you just have to remember what those colors stood for. Well, not any longer. Now, what you can do is add your own colors and give those colors a meaning. These colors still go to iFleet, so you can still use this to transfer messages between you and the field. But if we take a look at my list here, I have a couple different things you guys might like to use this for. Let's say this is a first time customer. We wanna give them our best. We can go ahead and mark that off. That lets the technician know, hey, this is their first service. Same thing can happen for other things. Maybe this is a larger job. We need to bring a ladder or bring safety gear we can mark that off. Now to enable this feature, what you want to do is go into your setup tab. And from the setup tab, you're going to head over to the scheduler because we're setting up a scheduling feature. From here, you'll choose setup scheduler color and change your color coding to by category. This will allow you to rename or create your own colors and categories from here. All you have to do is type one in, select a color, and press add. Another great thing about this feature is that these color codes are reportable. If you run any job or job history report, you will see the option to bring up by category, which will give you the results that you selected for this job. Another great feature added in version 97 of Smart Service is the ability to mark call aheads in iFleet. This will help you guys communicate between you and your office staff. We can take a look at our regular job and on the general information screen, I can mark the call ahead box. Now, usually you would see this box on the home tab in Smart Service and Smart Service alone. But we've now added the ability to send that call ahead feature to iFleet. So if I go ahead and head over to my iFleet device from here, you'll notice from here that my jobs now have a phone call symbol on them. That will let me know to call the customer ahead of time. To do so, once again, you can come down here in iFleet, you can tap on the phone symbol underneath the job, which will let you call the customer. However, if your device is not on cellular service, perhaps you're using Wi-Fi or you synced before leaving the office, tapping that icon will still give you the customer's name and phone number. For those companies that are tracking equipment in iFleet, it would be beneficial probably to have our model and serial numbers for every piece of equipment that we service. Well, you might have a problem gathering that information from the field, but not anymore. In version 97 of Smart Service, we've also added the ability to make model and serial required by iFleet technicians. So, if I would enter a job on my device, and enter the equipment section, enter any equipment record, if it does not have the model and serial number field filled out, you'll notice I can't just back out of this record, I have to report those numbers. So now I can use the barcode scanner in iFleet, or write in the model number to record that information. Only then will I be able to exit the record. This will also happen by creating a new record. You will have to enter the model and serial number for that equipment. To enable this feature for use in Smart Service and iFleet, head to the Setup tab of your program, go into the iFleet section, and in iFleet, mark either Require Equipment Model Number and or Require Equipment Serial Number. A great feature added for iFleet employees in Smart Service version 97 would be the ability to see if other technicians are coming with you on this job. So what you can do is open up your job and you want to scroll to the bottom left hand corner of this window. Now I'll see an assigned employees section. So if I'm waiting on another technician to arrive at the job site, if I'm supposed to meet up with someone beforehand, now I'll be able to have that information. I can tap on the assigned employees window and I will see both the assigned employee and any additional employees that are on this job with me.
Last but not least is another great feature added in this version of Smart Service. For those companies that like to write your scope of work or maybe a job description in the line item description of your items, uh, we can go ahead and look at our history records now. And If I double click on one of those, usually you'd have a problem when you're viewing those job items, you wouldn't be able to see, you know, well, what's the rest of the description. I could click in there and scroll side to side, but now for any of these items that have been added, I can go ahead and click on the top or bottom magnifying glass, which will open up this job and let me see the full description of work that we wrote when we were out there. So that'll do it for version 97 of Smart Service, the last release of 2016. If you'd like more information about this or previous releases, please visit smartservice.com updates. I've been Nori from My Service Depot, and thank you for watching. Thank you.